For the record, I'm done trying to make y'all comfortable. For the record, live on me going all the way. For the record, ain't trying to link no time to wait. For the record. Alright, how's it going everybody? Welcome to the video. Now today's going to be a little bit of a short video. It's pretty much just going to be the workout. Uh, this was Monday the 15th. So, July 15th, we're roughly just over two weeks into this prep. And it's definitely going pretty well so far. Uh, this morning I actually weighed in at 170.8 eight pounds so if you guys remember yesterday's video I weighed in at 169.8 so a pound up however the difference is my time the time of my weigh-in so over the weekend over the past week I've been weighing in probably like around nine o'clock in the morning versus this morning and the rest of this week I'll be weighing in at around 5 a.m. so it's a pretty big difference and the main difference is going to be how much water retention I'm holding because of that extra three, four hours where I'm basically sweating, continuing to sweat, and uh, losing all that excess water. So that's where that extra pound came from pretty much. Apart from that, my diet was still the same as the other day. And it's really one of those things where it's not a huge deal. I'll probably weigh in pretty light the next morning and continue to drop weight throughout this entire week. But moving on, we're gonna move straight into today's push workout. So this was a shoulder focused push workout. As you can see, we started off with a superset between a seated incline, or not really an incline, but a seated uh, barbell overhead press. And they're gonna be superset with a cable face pull. Now with the overhead press, we're gonna be going pretty heavy, well, relatively speaking, as heavy as, as we can control a full range of motion. You can see I'm coming all the way down, touching my chest, going all the way up to lockout, and I'm gonna be aiming for around eight to 10 reps for four total sets. And with the cable face pulls, we're gonna be doing around 12 to 15 reps, trying to do slow controlled movements, really trying to focus on those rear delts. So one big thing with this particular movement, and you'll see it in another angle as we go through the video, but it's gonna be my hand position. As opposed to grabbing the cable with like an underhand kind of, um, I don't know how you would describe it, but like say like a cable extension type of grip, I actually grab it slightly different. I grab, you can see actually a little bit of my hands there. I grab an overhand grip, which allows me to pull basically right to the side of my head with both of my fists as much as possible, which for me allows me to activate, activate my lateral and my rear delts more as opposed to something like a cable press down or cable extension grip. So hopefully that makes sense. Like I said, you'll see that movement again because we're gonna be supersetting it again with these dumbbell lateral raises. So dumbbell lateral raises, doing three sets of 15 to 20 reps, trying to keep the form as tight as possible. Once we start failing, then we're gonna start doing using a little bit of momentum, as you can see here, but really just trying to blast those lateral heads. That's gonna give us that width and that really nice X frame that everybody always goes for. So here you can kind of see what I was talking about. I use an overhand grip, and unfortunately, while I was doing one of the exercises, somebody came over and snagged the cable, so I had to use some standard um, handles and just kind of make do. But this is what I was talking about. That overhand grip allows me to bring my palms and my fists just to the side of my head, and it allows me to stay in a nice neutral position which enables me to activate those lateral heads and the rear head of my delt a lot more. Just kind of a mind muscle connection. Do whatever you guys find works best. And then in between sets, I was focusing on doing some nice kind of isolated and static squeezes to pump more blood into the muscle. Now with the lateral raises, superset with the cable face pull was three sets, 15 to 20 reps on the lateral, and then 10 to 15 reps on the face pull. Next, moved into a cable lateral raise. So really trying to blast the lateral head of my, of my delt today. Um, as you guys can see, doing a lot of lateral movements. 
and I will be continuing to do a lot of lateral and rear delt focused movements probably through the end of this prep, mainly because I want to really try and cap off my delts. Now with this movement in particular, this is one of my favorite movements for the lateral head of the delt. And what I do is you can see my other hand is holding on to the cable machine and I'm out at about a 45 degree angle. And then I don't know if you watch that other clip back, you'll notice that I'm actually standing with the cable between my legs, which allows the path of travel to basically be a little bit more in line with my body. So I'm not putting excess tension on my front delt or my um, rear delt. It's pretty much isolating that lateral head. Now, once I finish that, I did three sets of 12 to 15 reps on the lateral cable lateral raise. Then I moved into a cable face or a cable reverse fly. So you can see I took the handles off and moved the cable position up to just about shoulder height. It's actually a little bit lower than shoulder height because I'm leaning forward in order to better activate and isolate my rear delts. And then with this, I'm letting my palms cross each other. So getting a little bit of an extra stretch at the bottom. And then I'm trying to bring my elbows and my pinkies back first, bringing my elbows parallel to each other and parallel to my chest at the very least, if not squeezing a little bit further and trying to squeeze my shoulder blades together and then letting them stretch all the way out at the bottom. With that one, I did four sets of 12 to 15 reps, burning out the delts. And that, was finished, and that finished off the delts. Then I moved into a chest movement and the first chest movement is going to be an incline Smith Machine bench press. As you can see here, just a standard incline Smith Machine bench. I did four sets of 12 to, no, 10 to 12 reps. And once I hit failure, I pushed out a couple extra by doing what's called a rest pause set. So you'll see it right here. I reactivate rest for like five, 10 seconds max, and then I pump out two to four more or as many as I can get right there. So I got two more and then that was the set. But basically what a rest pause will do is it allows you to push past your failing point, recruiting just a little bit more energy once you've hit that failing point so that you can push past it and pump out a couple of extra reps. It's a great way of increasing the intensity in your workouts without going crazy on weight. And the biggest thing I can say with rest pauses is if you're not on something like a Smith machine or some kind of movement where you can drop the weight easily, make sure you have a spotter because that can be a very dangerous movement if you're trying to do rest pauses with say a freestanding barbell uh, because you're trying to work past your maximum load capacity essentially. So just be really careful with that type of um, intensity exercise and make sure you guys stay safe about it. Now, once I finished that, then I moved into incline cable chest flies. And with this one, you can see I'm really focusing on my tempo, pausing at the top, squeeze those pecs, squeeze them as hard as I can, stretch all the way down, trying not to go too far past parallel with the floor because I don't want to injure my shoulders because they're already pre pretty fatigued from all the shoulder work that I did earlier in the workout. So really just trying to focus on isolating that chest did three sets of 12 to 15 reps, focusing on like a two second pause at the peak contraction of that movement before moving into some triceps. And only did one tricep movement, but I did like seven sets of this one. So this was not an FST seven set. It was just a ton of volume and very controlled until I hit failure, at which point I started pumping out a lot of extra reps, which you'll see here in a second. But a big key to this movement is pull your shoulder blades back and pull and roll your shoulders back so that you can isolate those triceps and prevent injuring your rotator cuff and recruiting your shoulders. It'll help you really isolate and hit especially the top portion of your tricep kind of right where it ties into the shoulder. That's gonna be a huge portion of that movement is tighten your back so that you can really tighten and activate those triceps full lockout at the bottom squeeze it pause then full stretch at the top think of doing like a hammer curl when you're coming up with the weight curl that weight up even though it's coming down basically 
did four set or no seven sets like i said of kind of 10 to 15 reps and with a few forced reps there then i finished off with a little bit of posing so like i said we're about two weeks into this prep so you guys can kind of get an idea of how i am looking so far definitely coming a long ways and i'm pretty happy with where i'm at down just about five pounds just over five pounds ish from the start of this prep Still got a long ways to go. Ideally, I'm probably gonna be looking at maybe another 15 pounds before I hit stage weight. I'm not really sure. I'll have to see as I start getting leaner. I know at, ver at the very least, it's gonna be around eight to 10, but if not, then it's probably gonna be closer to like 15 pounds. Um, we'll really have to see. I'm not too concerned with getting super, super depleted. I just want to try and basically push my body as far as I can while staying as sane and healthy as possible. I'm not overly concerned with the show results. It's more personal results. Now, after the workout, I ended up going through and making my breakfast here, as you can see, just one serving of buttermilk pancake mix. That whole bag that you can see on the right side of the screen there is like $3 at Costco. It's a crazy deal and they are pretty damn good. Macros are not too bad. I'll have to go over them one of these days, but I had one serving of that. Uh, it's like 40 grams of carbs, 40 grams of oatmeal uh, with a two tablespoons, two tablespoons, yeah, two tablespoons of peanut butter powder, and then two whole eggs, and I also had um, a post-workout protein shake, which I used the Cellucor Core Performance Isolate Protein Powder, um, or no, it's not isolate, it's a whey protein powder, but used one, or two scoops of that, which is one serving, and then I also had, I believe, like 100 or 150 grams of watermelon, which you'll see in a second, but overall, that's going to be about the it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Like I said, it's going to be a little shorter today. I didn't do a whole lot. I uh, really focused on just kind of in and out and then had a bunch of stuff to do around the house and I had to go to work. So hopefully you enjoyed. If you guys made, if you guys made it this far and you're enjoying it, go ahead and hit that like button for me. It definitely helps out, shows your support. And subscribe for more videos because we got some coming out almost every single day of the week. And I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye. For the record, I'm done trying to make y'all comfortable. For the record, live on me going all the way. For the record, ain't trying to link no time to waste. For the record, for the record, for the for the record.